Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Shuriken Sentai Gin Ninja. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today let's talk about Shinobi number three, Formidable Enemy, Gabi Appears. Now, I like part of this episode, and the other part of this episode is kind of meh for me. And the problem is, is that the part I like doesn't seem to be what the episode wants to focus on. Otherwise, the title of the episode would reflect that. And what do I mean? Well, we actually have two different plots going on here. First is the resurrection revival of a new enemy in the series, uh, Gabi, uh, who, by the way, is not the main antagonist. We're, we're kind of getting his underlings and generals first before we get our true villain of the series, who in this episode uh, is still sealed away. He hasn't fully broken free, but he is having help from the outside um, to, to to get out, basically. And in this episode, uh, Gabi appears, and he is one of the underlings in question. Now, with this particular pot, it is his resurrection and what is being established now as a rivalry with Takahuru, our uh, Red Ranger. Um, now, here's the thing. This is something we, we've seen a number of times where one of our main villains takes an interest in the Red Ranger and, you know, they, they have some sort of rivalry with each other. Uh, it seems like in every series, the Red Ranger always has a direct enemy counterpart to him, whether it's Sentai or Power Rangers, because uh, we've seen this in uh, uh, Shinkanger, we've seen Gosager, Gokaiger, Go Buster to an extent, and of course we've seen this in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with Jason and Goldar. Um, the Red Ranger always seems to have a close enemy to him, and this is no exception to that. Um, so it is repetitive and redundant, and nothing really interesting interesting uh is is coming about this um but it's what the episode wants us to focus on because one is the title of the episode the resurrection of this character is uh obviously going to be important down the line and we spend a great deal of time uh, with the two battling takahuru basically retreating from the battle because well he just can't defeat him whether it's a stalemate uh or not he he just didn't go ahead and finish the battle but what I actually like about the episode, which, you know, really should be uh, our plot here and really isn't, it isn't expanded upon as much as I like, it is the story of Nagi, our Yellow Ranger or Key Ranger. Now, the, the thing about this is, I, I love how the episode actually picks off from uh, where, where we established in the second, where Takahuru and uh, Yakumo are still rivaling each uh, rivals with each other. Um, the, the beginning of the episode, we have them trying to find a lost scroll or going on some sort of mission. And the whole mission is about uh, Takahu and Yakumo basically going against each other. I'm first. I'm going to get it. I'm first. I'm first. Follow me. All that kind of stuff. I like how they continue that. And even when we get to the battle uh, with, with the villains, you know, it's the same thing. I want to go first. I'm going to go ahead and get it. So, again, even though it immediately happened, I'm glad that they're keeping up with that and they're remembering continuity. But, of course, they did this just the previous uh, episode. But Nagi seems to be feel, uh, felt left out here that, he feels he has the knowledge and he has the skills to not so much become the last ninja, which is what they're attempting to go ahead and do, but to be a contributing factor. It would seem to me, based on this episode, he is the least knowledgeable uh, of our main five, which is not a spite against him. It just seems to be what his character trait is, is that uh, he, he doesn't have as much experience. And the reason for that, I think, is explained in here. He talks about how he's gained several different licenses from just reading manuals. You know, he reads the manual, take the test, he's certified, whether that seems to be, uh, I think they said it was a trucking license in here, a uh, fireman's license, all that kind of stuff. He's obviously that person that's a good test taker and has a lot of books, uh, book smarts. But as this episode shows, he doesn't seem to have a lot of I guess, for lack of a better word, common sense, street knowledge, anything like that. Because he has this confidence himself that I can do this simply because I've read the manual. And what this story is, is telling us is that he reads everything, but he's never really put it into practice. He's got this confidence about him, which is not arrogant by any means, um, but is looked as reckless by the other rangers that he's read it, therefore he can do it. He's certified, therefore he is qualified for it. 
Um, much in the same way, I guess, anybody with an education has. Yeah, I have the education, therefore I must be good in whatever field it is I have the education in. As opposed to our other heroes who don't study up on it, they just do it, and therefore they are good. So I like how we've compared the other characters to Nagi here, and that Nagi has studied his whole life on this, but when put into practice, he's not all that good. I don't necessarily like it how the other rangers look at it as reckless, but the fact is that just because he's certified for it doesn't mean he's good enough to do it. And so this episode is him basically coming to terms with the fact that, yeah, I, I may be certified and I know what I'm doing from reading all these technical manuals and, and so forth, but I need to learn this practical experience. So that when he is caught on the truck and it's about to go barreling off a hill and whatnot, he realizes to himself, what would the other guys do? Stop thinking and just do it. That That is the lesson that he learns. Just do it. And the, th the thing is, he puts his manuals away at the end of the episode, and the good thing is, you know, he's learned from them, but now he realizes, now that I've read them, now that I've learned everything there is to learn, I have to now go out and actually do it. And I think that's a good message uh, to be sent. It's that, don't just go do it, but you do have to study up and learn from it first, which I think is a great way to say, hey, education does matter. So... What, again, what I like about this episode is Nagi realizing what he has to go ahead and do, not to separate himself from the others, but to get him on the same level, almost. But I, but it, the thing is, the episode doesn't focus on that primarily. That's like There are two parts of the episode. And it's great that you can tell two stories, but I really feel that the first few episodes of the series do need to focus on our main characters and getting to know who they are. I mean, Takaharu... Easy to know who he is. I, I, I think understanding his character is pretty easy to the point where we didn't need to have in this episode. Yeah, Yamakumo, uh, we got his uh, introduction in the second episode. We learned more about him. Now we got Nagi, but I wish the episode focused a little bit more on Nagi. Um, maybe that was all they really needed, but I just kind of feel instead of having two plots, maybe just have the, the main plot about Nagi would have been interesting. And I hope in the next few episodes, the girls will get their spotlight. We'll learn more about the girls uh, and their story. Uh, some other highlights of the episodes. I, I'm going to say this again. I love the grandfather. He is uh, the best secondary character in here. He's always doing something funny, always doing something clever. I really like it. He really brings a lightheartedness to the series. And you can see how Takaharu takes after him or how he idolizes him, how he's also kind of lighthearted. Because don't forget, Nagi's kind of like the comic relief in a way. But Takaharu, I think he is the, the lighthearted, the most lighthearted of our characters. And the fact that he takes after his grandfather... I think works in well with that plot. Um, again, we got the uh, introduction of our new villains. And, you know, here's the thing. I I'm not really invested in our villains as of yet. Uh, because our main villain we've established as human before. And he became a demon. These other characters, were they human at one time or are they just demons? And the fact that Gabi, his only thing is, I just want to fight... Again, we've seen that before. I guess the thing is, because they're all in rubber suits this season, I'm not expecting too much from our, our villains. Maybe we'll get something down the line and all that. But, man, I really wish we could have had some human villains and people that are not in suits this season just so we can get more characterization and more dynamic stories. Because, I, you know, I love three-dimensional villains, and we really haven't had any good villains in the series for a long time. Now, I would argue that Go Buster had some great ones with Enter and Escape, even though they kind of messed them up down towards the stretch of the series. Uh, I, and I still like the characters with Ryo and Mela and Geki Ranger and how complex and diverse they were, and as you'll notice, they, were, they all had human actors, even Long did, uh, within the series. So, Hopefully we'll get maybe some human villains kind of show up. Because every time they have a human villain, there's always a little bit more complexity there. Uh, even with Tokyuger, you know, the complexity of the villains didn't start happening until Zet showed up. So maybe, maybe something similar will happen within this series. Um... Beyond that, I don't have much else to go ahead and say, and other than, hey, Nagi, I think, is still my favorite character here. I think he's the one I can relate to the most. Uh, much in the same way uh, with Kiyu Blue back in Kiyu Ryuja, I relate with him the most because he is kind of the everyman. Nagi strikes me as 
the normal person of the group, if you can go ahead and call it that. Because everybody else is like learning magic, wants to be a ninja. There's all there's something fantastic about them. Nagi seems to be the most down to earth. Although since the girls really haven't had too much focus on them, I could be wrong in that. And well, let's see let's see what they get up to in the next couple of episodes. So, that's all I have to really say about this episode. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy it? And uh, so far, who's your favorite uh, Nin Ninja? Leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good evening. And the tavern is now closed.